Hey there, I'm Mac Wilson from The Current, and it is my privilege to be joined by Leon Bridges. Hello, Leon. What's up, man? Leon, the new record is out now. First of all, congratulations on the release of the new record, Gold Diggers Sound. It's been Thank in you. the works for a while, so congratulations on the release. It must be nice just seeing it out in the world at last. Absolutely, man. Um, it, it feels good to finally... Um, put this out in the world you know i'm really proud of this um this body of work so one of the uh one of the points that i'm sure has been brought up to you many times it, the name of the album gold digger sound refers to the name of the studio where it was released and one point that i thought was interesting is where over the last year and a half as we've spent so much time in our homes and we've spent so much time in particular places sometimes to the point where we feel uh, trapped in a particular place, you chose to celebrate that sort of feeling by commemorating the space where you spent years recording Gold Digger's sound. Was that a part of the it, maybe inadvertent intent in naming the record celebration of that place? Right. You know, well, you know, the, the, the experience, um, you know, at Gold Diggers was so profound for me. You know, I, I wanted to, um, you know, name the, the album, you know, in, in its honor. And it was almost, you know, somewhat of a, a homecoming in, in the sense of that's the, the way that I made music there. You know, all, most of these songs were derived from um, improvis improvisational jams. And that's reminiscent of how I made music on my first album, Coming Home. One of the songs on the record that really struck me, perhaps inadvertently again, in this the age of a pandemic, it's a song, Why Don't You Touch Me? So the lyrics to the, scene would, the, the song would seem to be born out of sort of a romantic disconnect. But in this age of COVID-19 where we're trying to avoid folks, it's possible to read that song almost as affection and care. Like, I am actively taking care of you by not touching you. Is that something that you <laughs> ever would have foreseen being a subtext of that tune? <laughs> not, not, not at all, but I, I, I see, um, you know, of, of, you know, how you can interpret it in that way. And, and it's totally speaks to, um, you know, COVID and, 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 you know, the, um, the pandemic in that way. Um, but yeah, the, I mean, with, with that tune, you know, I thought it was, you know, it, it was a dope angle, you know, to write about, you know, love diminishing in a relationship from a man's perspective and just that crippling feeling of like being physically close to someone and, but emotionally distant. So I got the opportunity to sit down and listen to the record. And one thing that I also noticed when I went to your website is that on the purchase page for the record, the default option is the vinyl record, which I think really suits the album. The way that it, you've had it sequenced, it's like 15 minutes or so of this sustained mood. Then you get up and you take a little bit of a pause and you flip the record over and then you get plunged back into it for another 15 minutes or so. It sets the album up really well to be enjoyed under all circumstances. Yeah, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a good journey. You know, the way that we, um, I guess, curated the, the sequence, you know, I wanted to kind of place the songs that, um, you know, when you look at like the, the top of the album, you know, those songs are more so um, kind of indie R&B oriented. And then it goes into this more so neo soul um, kind of sound, and um, it was all about finding the tunes that just felt most uh, cohesive together. And another element that I thought worked really well is, as you're going from song to song, you you're never quite sure where the state of a relationship might be at. You might be in an emotional disconnect, like you said, and why don't you touch me? And then you might be in a really <laughs> passionate mood to the next record. And I think that 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 balances really well the the idea of ups and downs in any given relationship that we have. Absolutely. You know, it, it um, you know, go to your sound, you know, it, it encompasses the multifaceted aspects of life. 
Um, and, you know, there's moments of, of introspection, you know, there's some lighthearted moments, um, and some sen- sensual moments on there. And, um, I feel like it all ties in together. Well, Leon, I know that you're a very, very busy man. You've been uh, working on lots of different projects over time. And here at The Current, last winter, I had the opportunity to chat with Robbie from The Avalanches right when their new album came out. And I, it was before I got the chance to listen to the record, and I was really surprised to hear your voice pop up. It was a pleasant surprise uh, hearing <laughs> you sing along with the Alan Parsons project. So how did that, who reached out to who, and did you realize <laughs> that you were essentially going to be duetting with the Alan Parsons project when you recorded Interstellar Love? Yeah, I think, um, honestly, I wasn't aware of that, actually. Um, But yeah, they they reached out to management and um, management reached out to me. And uh, I thought it would be a cool moment to, um, you know, just incorporate, you know, my vibe within within their music. And so um, we were in L.A. at the same time, popped into the studio and... um, and recorded my part and it's it's funny because something i had never done before but they basically made me do a thousand takes of um you know of of, of one of, of one you know one part in in the song and um you know but really great guys to work with and then another uh, record that you've been involved with that we've been enjoying over time was the collaborative ep that you recorded with croon bin uh, Texas mm-hmm. Sun, beautiful, <clears throat> evocative tune. Uh, when did you first meet the uh, the folks in Kroonbin, and how have you been keeping up with them over the last several months? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Kroonbin opened up for me on one of my tours in, in 2018, and how that collaboration um, transpired was Laura sent me an instrumental that they had been working on, and right before I got on the stage, you know, I, I wrote a couple of lyrics to it, recorded it in a garage band, and they were digging it. So we we carved out some time in, in Houston to um, record the EP. And one of, one of the dopest collaborations I've done, you know, this is all about redefining people's, percep- people's um, perception of what Texas music is. Leon, we've talked about the new record. We've talked about the uh, some of the uh, folks that you've collaborated with and the idea that you have a lot of friends that you work with. But I, I want to ask you personally, I know that this is a time of celebration for you, but how are you doing now? How are you, how are you holding up? How are you feeling? Even if it's just capturing how you personally feel at this moment in time, take a breath and how are you doing? Yeah, um, definitely you know, in a better space, um, mentally, you know, for, for a minute, um, you know, I was having these feelings of, um, just an inadequate inadequacy in ways of, you know, of not being a good enough singer, songwriter, or, um, or deserving of being in this position. Um, but I, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to have really close friends that helped me, um, get through that. But other than that, you know, I'm content, you know, I have an awesome label, an awesome team, um, you know, a dope body of work. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to get back on the road and um, perform these songs live. Well, Leon, thank you for say, taking some time out of your day and uh, chatting about the new record. And we look forward to seeing you live. And again, congrats on the release of Gold Digger Sound. And we'll talk again soon. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Leon. Thank you.